Simplification in conjunction. Rules of inference. Simplification says P and Q together, therefore P or Q separately. P and Q work like a premise, while P, Q separately are possible conclusions that are entailed by that premise. We can see it a little bit better when we start using regular sentence letters as inputs. A for P, B for Q gives us A and B, therefore A, or B. You can use simplification, however, with much more complicated inputs. Now we'll try another conjunction, A and B, just for P, and if C, then D for Q. We'll sub A and B in for P onto the left side of our ampersand, and if C, then D onto the right side of our ampersand. Those two things together, no matter how long, entail the things on both sides of the ampersand. Conjunction is the mirror to simplification. P and Q separately entail P and Q together. Just as before, we'll use simple inputs first, A and B. A, B, therefore, A and B. But you can use conjunction for anything, no matter how complex. Here we'll take either A or B for P and a long sentence. It's not the case that B and, if D then C, we'll sub that in for Q. A and B goes in for P, and it shows up in our premise, as well as on the left side of the ampersand in the conclusion. This lengthy sentence subs in whole for Q. It becomes the right-hand side of our conjunction. You can use conjunction to connect any two well-formed formulae. In both of these rules, the main operator is ampersand. For simplification, you take an ampersand and show that it entails each side of it separately. Whereas with conjunction, you can conjoin any two premises, no matter what operators they use, and put them on either side of a new conjunction, with the ampersand as the new main operator. What you can't do is use simplification on lines with not, V or arrow, and you can't use conjunction to get a not V or arrow. These rules of inference only apply in one direction, and they only apply to whole lines. With simplification, exactly one premise leads to either one of two possible conclusions. With conjunction, you must cite two lines to get one conjunction. Let's look at some translations to see a little bit more about how and why these rules work. Simplification, we can translate to the sky is blue and the grass is green. Therefore, the sky is blue and the grass is green. With conjunction, we've got the sky is blue and the grass is green separately. Therefore, the sky is blue and the grass is green. Notice how the an and in English and the ampersand in symbolic logic track along together. We can also use truth tables, joint truth tables in fact, to prove that these are valid arguments. With a joint truth table, first we highlight all of the rows with all true conclusions, all true premises, sorry. We'll be looking for true conclusions. Both of these rules are only, we're only interested in the first line because that's the only one with all true premises. And for both of them, there are only true conclusions, no false conclusions. Both of these are therefore valid arguments. Let's take a look at how simplification and conjunction might be used correctly. Here's a pretty simple argument. P and Q and R, therefore P and R. We're really just getting rid of Q, but we don't have a rule for that. So first, we'll apply simplification. We'll get P by itself, then we'll get Q and R by itself with simplification again. Now, we'll simplify line 3 and get R by itself. Finally, we'll use conjunction with lines 2 and 4, and we'll put P and R together. 
Later on, we'll get rules that allow us to move parentheses or change the order of things connected by ampersand. But without those, we can do this with a combination of simplification and conjunction and a few more lines. Here's a more complicated argument that will also make use of these rules. Premise 1. P and either Q or R. Premise 2. If P, then S and T. Therefore, either Q or R and S. Well, first thing, simplify line 1. We'll get P, and then we'll get Q or R. We'll need both of those. Then, we'll do a modus ponens using lines 2 and 3 to get S and T. Then we'll simplify S. We don't need T for the conclusion, so we'll leave it. Finally, we'll conjoin lines 4 and 6 to get our conclusion. Let's take a look at some common errors. First, there's the possibility of citing only a partial line instead of a whole line. And second, there's an unfortunately common error of using simplification on disjunctions and conditionals. So let's take a look at some ways you might do this wrong. First, we might have it's not the case that P and Q. You might be tempted to use simplification and get just P, but that would be an error. You might be tempted to use simplification to get not Q. Maybe you think you can just toss P out, keep the not and the Q. Neither of those work. Another way this might go wrong is if you have a longer sentence, like either P and Q or if R then S. You might think you can get P out of that and simplify that off, but the parentheses say that the main connector is the V, not the ampersand, so that won't work. You might think that you can get rid of P and get Q or if R then S, but again, the main connector is the V, not the ampersand. In our first example, the not is the main connector. You can't use simplification there. And in the second, it's the disjunction. No simplification there either. In any case, these answers aren't entailed by line one. You can't pull out just one piece of a partial line. The even more common error is using simplification on the wrong main operator. I think this is kind of a panic move uh, students sometimes make. Don't make this move. Here's a couple of wrong ones. If P then Q, therefore P by simplification. Or either P or Q, therefore Q by simplification. That doesn't work. For one thing, it's just not the rule. Simplification requires an ampersand. But we can use a truth table to see why simplification works with ampersand and does not work with arrow or V. Here's our joint truth table. First, our premise P and Q, that's true. Our conclusions, P and Q separately, they're true, no false ones. So far, so good, that one works. Now let's try it with the arrow. Well, it still works in the first line, but in the last two lines, we've got a true premise and a bunch of possible false conclusions. So, if P then Q does not entail P. How about the disjunction? Again, that first line works, but the next two do not. We've got true, true premises leading to possible false conclusions. That makes those invalid arguments. So, don't use simplification in that way. Thanks for watching.